Hello everyone. Welcome to Analog Communication Tutorials. In this video, I'm going to discuss on the topic single tone frequency modulation. Please note, in my previous video, I have derived expressions for the time domain representation of both frequency modulated as well as phase modulated signals. That video will be a prerequisite for this video. So, I would highly recommend you to watch that video first before you continue with this. You can watch that video by clicking on the link shown in the top right corner right now or I will leave the link of the same in the video description below. Coming to the topic of this discussion, which is single tone frequency modulation, I would like to start by first writing the time domain expression for the frequency modulated signal which is given by s of t equals ac into cos of 2 pi f c t plus k f into integral 0 to t m of t, where a c represents the carrier amplitude, f c represents the carrier frequency, k f represents the modulation sensitivity constant, and lastly, m of t represents the information bearing signal. Now, by analyzing this equation carefully, we find that the frequency modulated signal, which is S of t, is a nonlinear function of the modulating signal M of t. Therefore, the frequency modulation itself can be said to be a nonlinear modulation process. This is a very important point to note. Because of this particular property of the frequency modulation, drawing spectrum for a frequency modulated wave is highly complex unlike drawing the same for an amplitude modulated wave. Let us now consider a sinusoidal modulating signal m of t which is of the form a m into cos 2 pi f m t where a m represents the amplitude of the modulating signal and f m represents the frequency of the modulating signal. So, the instantaneous frequency f i of t of the frequency modulated signal can be given by the expression f c plus k f into m of t. Once again, I would like you to note that this is derived in my previous video. Let me now substitute m of t from equation 2 into this part of the equation. So, f i of t becomes f c plus k f into a m multiplied by cos 2 pi f m t. Let me now write the product of k f and a m as delta f, where delta f is called as the frequency deviation and it represents the maximum departure of the instantaneous frequency which is f i of t from the carrier frequency f c. It should be noted that Frequency deviation is a very important parameter in the design of frequency modulation systems. Let me come back to equation 4 here and you can see that equation 4 is given by delta f equals k f which is the sensitivity constant of the frequency modulation multiplied by a m which is the amplitude of the sinusoidal modulating signal. Now, Using equation 4, which is given by delta f equals k f into a m, I can say for frequency modulation, the frequency deviation delta f is proportional to a m. Also, the frequency deviation delta f is independent of f m, which is the frequency of the input sinusoidal modulating signal. Let us now recall equation 3 which is f i of t equals f c plus delta f into cos 2 pi f m t. This equation is given here. Also, we know that the instantaneous frequency f i of t is related to instantaneous angle theta i of t by the expression f i of t equals 1 by 2 pi d by dt of theta i of t. Let me take the 2 pi here to the LHS. So, the LHS becomes 2 pi into f i of t followed by the RHS which is d by dt of theta i of t. 
Let us now apply integration with the limits 0 and t on both sides of equation 5. So, I would obtain integral 0 to t 2 pi into f i of t equals theta i of t. I will rewrite this expression by interchanging the positions of LHS and RHS to obtain theta i of t equals 2 pi integral 0 to t f i of t dt. Let us now go back to equation 3 which represents the instantaneous frequency f i of t. Let me now take the RHS of this equation and substitute in place of f i of t here which is done in this part of the equation. Let me now expand this equation. So, it would be 2 pi f c integral 0 to t dt plus 2 pi delta f into integral 0 to t cos 2 pi f m t dt. Coming to the first term, integration of 0 to t dt is equal to t over the limits 0 and t. And coming to the second term, integration 0 to t cos 2 pi f m t dt is sin 2 pi f m t divided by 2 pi f m t over the limits 0 and t. After applying the limits, I will obtain the expression for the instantaneous angle theta i of t as 2 pi f c t plus delta f divided by f m into sin 2 pi f m t. Now, in the RHS of this equation, the ratio of delta f which is the frequency deviation to the value of the frequency of the input modulating signal f m is called the modulation index of the frequency modulated signal and it is denoted by beta. I have shown that in this equation. So, beta represents the modulation index and is given by the ratio of frequency deviation which is delta f to the frequency of the input modulating signal f m. Let me now substitute for beta into the equation for theta i of t. So, theta i of t becomes 2 pi f c t plus beta into sin 2 pi f m t. By analyzing this equation carefully, we will find that in a physical sense, the parameter beta represents the phase deviation of the frequency modulated signal. That is, it represents the maximum departure of the angle theta i of t from the angle 2 pi f c t of the unmodulated carrier. Lastly, the frequency modulated signal is given by the generic expression s of t equals a c into cos theta i of t. Let me now substitute for theta i of t from the previous equation to obtain the expression for single tone frequency modulated signal s of t as a c into cos 2 pi f c t plus beta into sin 2 pi f m t. This expression is the time domain representation of single tone frequency modulated signal. Lastly, before we end this video, I want you to note that depending upon the value of the modulation index beta, frequency modulation can be distinguished into two cases. When the value of beta which is the modulation index is less than one radian, the frequency modulation is called narrow band frequency modulation. On the other hand, when the modulation index beta is greater than one radian, we obtain wide band frequency modulation. In my next video, I will be discussing upon narrow band frequency modulation. So, stay tuned. Well, with that, we have come to the end of this video on single tone frequency modulation. If you found this video to be informative, kindly like and share this video and subscribe to my channel for more tutorials on analog communication. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.